Puntland heads to the polls. This week, the semi-autonomous region of Somalia will vote. The new election process may be more important than the outcome as the one-person, one-vote system plays out across all districts for the first time in decades. Can the region complete its transformation from a Somali pirate sanctuary to a beacon of democracy? I'm Andrea Sankey, and today's newsmaker is Puntland. Somalia has been mired in civil war for over three decades. Democratic elections have repeatedly been delayed by political wrangling and security challenges. But the semi-autonomous Puntland region, which sits roughly in the middle of the country, will be holding their own municipal elections this week. The road to the one-person, one-vote poll has not been easy for President Saeed Abdullahi Deni, nor for the opposition. At least two people on the election committee were removed after disagreements about government interference in the process. The Minister of Internal Affairs was also replaced. But despite that, the international community has commended the region and the Transitional Puntland Electoral Commission for overcoming the challenges. Here's a look now at what it's taken for Puntland to get to this point. Puntland lies on the northeastern corner of Somalia, bordering the Gulf of Aden and the Indian Ocean. The region declared autonomy during the Somalia Civil War in 1999, but remained a part of the federal government. In a country marred with violence, Puntland is relatively safe and prosperous and hosts many refugees from the south. Its economy is also thriving, thanks to large oil and gas reserves. Its major port, Garad, boosts regional development and secures food supplies to the Horn of Africa. A surge in pirate raids over a decade ago has since been quelled by the UAE-funded and internationally trained Puntland Marine Police Force. Then there were attacks by the Al-Qaeda-affiliated Al-Shabaab terror group, but none of these have held Puntland back from a transition to democracy. In 2021, the state ditched an indirect electoral system that saw elderly clan members appoint a 66-seat local assembly. Instead, the people went to the polls to elect lawmakers in three districts. It was the region's first one-person, one-vote election in more than 50 years. That successful experiment paved the way to expand it. On Thursday, Puntland will vote for more than 3,000 candidates across 33 districts and seven provinces. The UN mission in Somalia has commended the historic moment. The partners believe that Puntland's experience with direct elections has the potential to inform and inspire the expansion of democracy across Somalia at all levels of government. But it's been a long process to get here. Puntland president, Saeed Abdullahi Deni has been criticized for mismanaging previous elections with rampant allegations of voter fraud and malpractice. And they remain a matter of concern for the upcoming polls. Opposition politicians have asked Deni to stop the vote and engage in negotiations with all parties to avoid what they call irreversible damage. They accuse the president of hatching a plot to extend his term, which is due to end next year. Despite expressing willingness to hold presidential elections with a popular vote, Denny hasn't yet set a clear path, and critics say he might assess the results of local elections and act to the advantage of his car party. Denny is also in a political rift with the government in Mogadishu. He is unhappy about the federal government's growing control over the region. Puntland has also refused to participate in the country's debt relief program. Somali Prime Minister Hamza Abdibar says Puntland will be responsible for any election failure. It is better for people to go for free elections, but what if what's going on will lead to the destruction of Puntland? It should be done in a way that is consensus and something that is agreed upon, otherwise no. Meanwhile, Deni, who also ran for Somalia's presidency last year and lost, accuses Mogadishu of undermining regional stability. The president and his prime minister have agreed to refuse the Puntland democracy and its willingness to hold one man, one vote elections. Democratic transitions are not easy. Despite all the obstacles, Puntland has managed to develop a direct election system, 
and if it manages to pass its biggest test yet, it might inspire not just Somalia, but also the greater region. Well, joining me now for more perspective on the Puntland election and whether it can succeed is Jonathan Ofai Ansa. He's the publisher of Africa Briefing magazine and he joins me now from London. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, you know, it's been tried before among a few districts at a time, but it's taken decades really to get this uh, one person, one vote of this scale, 40 districts uh, and provinces in Puntland. Why does this vote matter so much? Well, it matters sort of because uh, the put just to for the people of Portland, you know, to assert, you know, their independence to uh, then to show to the whole world that uh, it can operate or it can run its it democracy, it can run its own affairs, it can, you know, uh, maintain a stable government in the country. So, I mean, for their own sake and also to prove to the world, it's going to go ahead and make sure that uh, these elections are successful. Do you think they will be successful? Yeah, I should think so because look, you take a look. We, we've had the main, you know, Somalia. You know, the, I mean, after a protect after after a protracted process, they've eventually been able to establish, you know, a new government since last year May. You know, and then they are going on over. So I think they are going to take a cue from what's happened in um, Somalia and do the same, you know, in Portland. Hmm. It's interesting, though, because it would seem so fundamental to, you know, the development of democracy to have one person, one vote. But there is actually a lot of mistrust going into this because the opposition and clan elders feel that this style of voting actually gives the incumbent this unfair advantage, a chance to manipulate uh, the election and actually avoid what would have been the normal process of sharing power with various clan elders in kind of a rotating manner. Uh, do you think it's time for that mistrust to end and give this democratic system a chance? Or is there good reason for certain people to believe that it won't work out fairly? Well, there are good and bad reasons. But we shouldn't forget that, uh, that um, habits, we are all human beings. We're all creatures of habits. Habits die hard. So when we are used to a certain system, a certain mode of doing things, you know, and um, a new system comes in to be implemented, naturally, there's bound to be some um, um, a pushback and also some mistrust. But I believe that uh, the one by one vote, you know, it, I think will be the best solution because uh, it has to break, you know, the stranglehold the clans have, you know, over the country. You know, there is an issue as well, though, with the federal government actually trying to stop these elections, even though Puntland, unlike Somaliland, wants to remain part of greater Somalia. Why is there that, that conflict between Mogadishu and Puntland? I believe, um, I, I think they are not, I, I believe Mogadishu sees uh, Puntland maybe as not, you know, playing to its rule book. Okay, and again, um, I think Mogadishu, we should forget that Somali, as it is, it, it's, it's some sort of a federation. But uh, I think Somali wants to uh, sort of exert, you know, the central government wants to exert, maintain and exert its authority you know, on all the uh, states, Puntland included. But I think, listen, um, things are moving in the right, with, with, in the right direction. I, I believe that uh, with some dialogue, meaningful progress could be made. I mean, how serious is the, the terrorist threat now in Puntland? How much is Al Shabaab under control? And I must mention again, it is remarkable that Puntland did manage to get the piracy issue very much under control. Uh, but is Al Shabaab still a very much a destabilizing factor in the region? Um, I don't know about Puntland, but I know Al Shabaab is quite um, active, quite uh, quite active in other parts of Somalia as a whole. But I don't know much about Al Shabaab's activities in Puntland. But even then. Um, the government uh, of President uh, Mohammed, you know, it has gone very far, you know, in uh, in clipping in 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 minimizing the influence, you know, of Al Shabaab. Though Al Shabaab hits back every now and then with mobbings in Somalia and elsewhere, but on the whole, um, uh, the central government is winning the war against Al Shabaab. You know, as I mentioned, the economy of Puntland is doing 
very well, actually, thanks to certain oil and gas reserves. Uh, do you think the regional government then will be able to manage that level of profit uh, as it increases? Because there is the common line that actually that kind of resource wealth can prove more of a curse rather than a blessing. It is up to the it is up to the leaders. You know, and, uh, we have this uh, sorry this um, perennial problem in Africa where you know well any resource we have you know more or less becomes a case. But um, it will be up to the leaders themselves to 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 manage the resources well. You know, to better the lives of the of the citizens. You no know, one cannot say from London for me that they will do this or do they will do that. But it is up to but judging from from other stories, other scenarios in Africa, one hopes that um, the leaders in Portland, you know, the incoming government or whoever is there now, would manage the resources well and make sure the citizens, you know, benefit adequately from the resources. Okay. I mean, finally, if this if this vote is carried out, you know, peacefully, uh, how likely is it that the model itself will be followed in the rest of Somalia and in the greater region and in Africa? Uh, if, it's, it, if it's successful, I mean, you're talking about the elections, you know, moving away from the clan system. Already, uh, we're moving away from the clan system, you know, through a one bank one vote. If it is successful, I believe that uh, with time, over time, it will, it will be replicated across the whole of Somalia. Okay. That's what I believe. Well, that's good to hear. Jonathan, we're, we're going to have to leave it there. I'd like to thank you so much for joining us on this edition of the Newsmakers. So can and will this election succeed? Joining me now to debate that are from Rabat, Abdiaziz Abdirahman. He is the former commissioner of the Somalia Federal Election Implementation Team. And from Washington, D.C., Hodan Issey, assistant professor emeritus at the State University of New York at Buffalo and former first lady of the Puntland state of Somalia. Thanks both so much for being with us. Abdiaziz, I'll start with you. I mean, how do you expect this vote to go? Will the results be accepted and will there be ultimately some kind of peaceful transition? Thank you for the platform and the opportunity to talk to the TRT and also I thank Dr. Fon uh, on the side of Washington DC who is actually a very important person when it comes to the Somali side. Uh, I believe uh, the election, the, uh, the coming election in Woodland, that is a local country. Okay, we're having a lot of trouble with uh, Abdi Aziz's line. Let me take Abdiaziz, we're going to try to correct yes. your connection and we'll come back to you. Uh, let me ask Kodan Ise, uh, just to explain what your expectations are for, for Thursday's vote. Uh, my expectation is, uh, number one, I just want to say that I'm very happy uh, that this process of one person, one vote, which have the equal, principle of equal representation, that advocates for political equality. I am hopeful. I can't predict the future with perfect foresight, but I'm hopeful that it will be peaceful. As you know, all elections are problematic and controversial. And at times, as we know from the US election, uh, it, it could be sometimes violent. But I think from what I see now and what I gather, what based on what's going on, yes, there were some problems, but I think. I am hopeful that on the 25th, for the first time in Somalia, which is going to be a real pilot model that all Somalis will look and be proud of, there might be, and I say there might be, as I said, I don't have the um, perfect foresight for what's going to happen in the future, but I'm hopeful. And I think that most of the kinks have been straightened up and there might be election, will be election, on the 25th, where people have to uh, vote for their own needs and wants, and um, the government will have to will have, right. will say something. Yeah, it is really. It's just good to hear a sense of optimism because, I mean, you know, it's it's so basic to some outsiders that one person, one vote uh, just sounds like a basic kind of pillar of democracy. But in Puntland, there seems to be a lot of mistrust. The opposition seems to feel that it gives the incumbent this chance to manipulate uh, the system and really just keep a grip on power rather than allow for what they would like to see as the fair rotation of these clan elders and the sharing of power. 
among various clans by taking turns, basically. So is their mistrust misplaced or is it legitimate in the context of Puntland and the clans? I think mistrust is, is, is a very common to a country that has gone through the pain of civil war and, and internal displacement and not having really a proper government. So that is a, ta a, that's a given. Two, Somalis are very traumatized. And of course, there hasn't been any election that's based on, on one person or people didn't have a, have a say of what their wants or what their services they wanted uh, to, to be delivered. Most of them were, most of the issues that you see now is those who have power competing over what sort of model that can be used with the current government have more power to sway the election on their way. Um, yes, there is, there's always a mistrust among elections, any elections, whether it's a fully um, grown country like the U.S. or Puglan, which is really trying the first model of, 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 of a one person, one vote for Somalia. Okay. So I think that you are, you are expected some mistrust, and there is some, of course, but I think um, the ball is on the government side where democratic le leadership is crucial to democratic governance. And this process to be successful will be the, the, the legacy of the current president and his, his, his government. So I'm, I'm, there okay. has been some problems, but I think Woodland has um, have resolved some of the most problems, at least for the 25th election, uh, and the rest will be probably kicked out or okay. will be resolved in the future. So I do think that it probably will happen. And if there is any fallout, that can be resolved through the, Let's hope the clan so. leaders um, or, 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 or fair the enough. proper... Uh, if, if you can just better explain then, you know, whether these clans and clan elders who really do mistrust the system actually do want to see one person, one vote. Because there have been those who say that this system particularly really, it benefits women in many ways. And that's why in large part, they'd like to see it carry through. But still there's this, the clan elders are very powerful. This has been the core of the system for decades. Do they want to see this transition? Well, the clan elders, elders I believe they've done their job during the time when their representation and oversight was needed. We have to, to grow out of that system and we have to find a system where there is a political equality and a principle of equal representation. Of course, the land leaders have to respond to the needs of the men. There is no youth and women were un underrepresented uh, in that process, mm. whatever the reason is. So we cannot be stuck. The, the fact that clan leaders were, were allocating political resources based on 4.5, whatever it is that's been deemed necessary, it was a necessary process at the time, but we cannot be stuck with an inferior process. We need to move on where equal representation for all, all citizens are there, but whether they women or, or, or especially women and youth. Women are the bedrock of Somali society, wherever they are, in every state, in every region. And even though they are there to help the family, they have been missing in the political power sharing. So hopefully this time, the vote is on their hand. I have nothing but respect for the clan leaders, but the time is over. I have a respect for the 66 Apudlan um, parliamentarians who chose presidents for the past 24 years. That time is over. Okay. Uh, and I will expect some drawbacks um, and, and mishaps in this process because it's the first time when a new baby is born, you expect things to be uh, not to be perfect. It's going to be a lot of growing pains. Nonetheless, we need the government to make the process somewhat accountable and fair and make sure even those who are opposing the process feel comfortable about the, 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 how the process is undertaken. So okay, when, yes, when it, you will took, when, it will be controversial, it will be problematic given this, the Somali history and the lack of strong institutions, even though they have institutions relatively, have a better institutions, is still 
Somalia is is in the process of recovery right. from and, prolonged and, war and and and, and, absolutely. and, and lack of institution. And at, and, at this and, point, and people want to see you know fair and equal representation in this election. But the the truth is, as far as the numbers are concerned, only about four hundred thousand people have registered to vote, which is actually a fraction of those who are who are eligible. And some actually say that's due just to a basic lack of awareness about this election, how to register, how to participate, how to exercise your democratic rights. So can this election truly be free and fair? I don't think um, there is no perfect free or fair election, to be very frank, in anywhere in the world. But I'm not saying it's not perfect. I'm not saying it's without a problem. I'm not saying it's without a controversial. To me, as a person, as a woman, from Somalia who've seen the plight of people lacking their voice, not representing their needs, no service delivery. The right. government, the government have no power. Even if 10% of them can vote based on the rest of the population. And it's, it's also, it's a pilot model. The last election for the federal government was a mayhem. Only few, mm. uh, over less than 300 something, Parliamentarians were 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 actually deciding based for the for the whole country, and Puntland is no different either. Sixty six uh, parliamentarians that involved in all sorts of problems will decide, and it never passes. Uh, the, the, the service never reaches to the people who were supposed to be served or governed. So even if it's a fraction of the population who are able to say something. And also, who can choose among the alternative? There are at least some choices here. It's not only one, one, um, one single party. That yes, they are limited to okay. me. Okay. But still, there is a, some choice. And if these uh, four hundred thousand people can spoke their choice, and there is some sort of an account accountability, mm. I think it's better than the sixty-six. All I'm saying is. It's this a process, be, it's a model me, pilot. It might represent the needs and the wants of the people. Again, Understood. It, 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 will, it will advocate the principle of equal representation, okay. equal political equality, who the, the government will have a power, and they might Hold have on. a choice among the Understood. I'm going to, I'm so going to try is, to give uh, Abdi Aziz one last uh, chance to participate. Hopefully we'll have your connection corrected. Go ahead. We have our last couple minutes I'd like to give to you. In the election cabinet, the pre-election has been done, all the, and also the election day is going to But I, the question is, what will be happening after the post of the local council elections if there will be a challenge? The mechanisms are not ready. Those are the questions that can be raised. In three, three things are very important in this election: the consultation of the stakeholders to be on board, and also the government of uh, Deni. The time is very short, but this is a Okay, Abdi Aziz, unfortunately, we, your connection just isn't strong enough. Uh, so we're going to have to leave it there. I'd like to thank both of my panelists so much for being with us on this edition of the Newsmakers, our viewers, of course, for joining us as well. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter, and do be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Andrea Sankey. We'll see you next time.